Hey guys, I wanted to do a video about the balance changes that has happened recently on the Japanese version of School Idol Festival. I'm gonna call this like the 6.4 tier list for all intents and purposes. That's because the 6.4 update will be happening on November the 20th, even though these balance changes have kind of already happened like a few days ago for the most part. Uh, but it's just more appropriate to group them with the 6.4 update, so... There's, there's this notice uh, that was released on November the 8th, and then on the 15th is when we got the new buffs for all the scorecards. So, I'm just gonna go over what the notice says. It's in Japanese, if you're curious. Uh, we'll get these changes in the worldwide version. I don't know when. Uh, it could be a few months from now, it could literally be tomorrow. It's up to K-Lab to decide pretty much, but it will happen eventually, so it's good to know at least in advance and to prepare for it if you do want to. So, first things first, uh, number one point, they're making it so the special reward boxes, you know, like the eggs, uh, 5 mil, 10 mil egg things that you can randomly get, they're making it so the rewards are a lot better and more consistent to get like the good stuff from. And I don't know how much better it will be since I'm making this video on November the 17th and the update isn't until November the 20th so it's still gonna be like two days until they update to version 6.4 and we actually know and due to like maybe some Japanese player sample sizes like how much better these drop rates are gonna be. So they're gonna be removing a whole bunch of shit like literal shit that nobody actually cares for. They're gonna take out all the three slot school idol skills from the special boxes, as well as the teachers, like the, not the skill up teachers, um, the, the regular experience color teachers, as well as white alpaca, and the Yazawa siblings too. And also G, so you can no longer get money, like you can't just get like 50,000 gold for opening those reward boxes. And then here is, they're gonna reduce the rates of getting these prizes. So it's gonna be harder to get the regular 4 slot school item skills. So the charm, heal, and trick that you're all familiar with from the regular boxes, they're gonna make it so it's a lot lower chance you can get them from the special boxes. And then, like, friend points, you can still get, but also at a reduced rate. But instead, they're introducing this thing called Love Gem Pieces. Like, in the, in the Japanese version, they're called Loveka. So they're called, like, Loveka Stone Piece. And it's pretty much saying that you can collect these pieces, and then once you get enough, you can join them together, and you can make one love gem. So that's a very interesting approach since uh, the only thing you really couldn't farm from playing the game was a way to restore your like, LP. But now that you can play the game and then randomly get these uh, love gem pieces, I don't know actually, I'm not sure if it actually says how many pieces it will take to make one love, love gem. Maybe three? Maybe five? Like, I'm quickly looking here and I don't actually see the exact number, but... Yeah, you can join multiple pieces to make one love love gem, which is nice, but if they're only gonna appear in these special boxes, I wouldn't expect it to be too common to get, or maybe they will be common to get to kind of offset all the, like, the useless garbage they removed from the special boxes. But it, the point is that it won't... you can't, like, infinitely play. Like, it's gonna be rare enough, or uncommon enough, so that uh, you'll still have like a net loss when you like spend gems to refill your LP and then and then play and grind pretty much. So number two is kind of the important thing that I'm gonna be mostly focusing on for the rest of the video. It's gonna be like a balance to score up skills. And the whole reason they did this was uh, they realized that the leaderboards, on JP at least, was being dominated by limited cards, mainly like the uh, School Idol Festival AC Umi, uh, pretty much the, the perfect based cat card that was considered pretty OP. So instead they're buffing 
uh, every single score, like vanilla scorecard. So you know the ones that were like every blank notes, every blank combo, every blank perfects. You can get a flat amount of score increase, and those are the the ones that synergize with the charm school idol skill. So they buffed all of these to kind of be able to compete with the uh, uh, AC Umi. And uh, we'll be going over the data very shortly. I just want to go through these other two points that they mention. So point number three is pretty much uh, they're making it so SR and UR, like login bonus and promo cards essentially, will be getting an increased stats you know, to put them on par with regular SR and UR cards, which I guess is pretty nice. And then to coincide with that, number four, uh, the amount of school idol skill slots for these promo and login bonus cards will be now equivalent to regular SR and UR cards. So, for example, like, the birthday card that you got from logging in only had two school idol skill slots, but after this update, uh, they will now have four slots to begin with, and you can unlock up to eight. But if you if you spend resources unlocking a promo card's school idol skill slot, don't even do that. It's it's the biggest waste of resources you can ever do. I don't know. Like it, I guess it's just nice that you start with four now, so you can put like a veil on it instead of just like putting a ring on it instead. Substantial base stat benefit for the team, I suppose. But yeah, that's that's the notice here, and now I'm going to switch over to my um, spreadsheet, which will go over all the mathematical stuff. So, this mainly pertains to people who are interested in the math behind it, like you enjoy the team building theory, You're, you maybe are somewhat of a whale, and want to see like the new tier list, so that's what I'm going to go over for the rest of this video. And pretty much uh, what I did to start with, with us, I picked like three very powerful cards, um, and then I analyzed their old and new like numbers to compare, maybe to see if there was a trend. And picking Pool Honoka was unfortunate because Pool Honoka is kind of like the exception. They, they overbuffed Pool Honoka for whatever reason. Um, if you take that out of consideration, the the buff changes, like the balance changes, were very good for the most part. It's just that Pool Honoka was overcompensated for whatever reason, and as a result, it just makes it unfair <laughs> to the rest of the cards. So, if you're interested, you can kind of take a gander here. So this was like their old, the old numbers, like old absolute values for skill levels 1 through 8, and then these are the new values for skill levels 1 through 8, and then the ratio here is pretty much taking the the new number, and then you divide it by the old number to see how much of a, like a ratio it got buffed by. So, for example, at skill level 8, this uh, Halloween Conan got buffed by 1.229, which pretty much means that uh, the old value multiplied by this ratio got the new value. And Honoka here got 1.263 the highest of any card, really. And then um, Maki got like 1.238. So I went on a mission to see if I could find any sort of discernible pattern uh, for this madness. And at first glance, it was pretty hard to actually find anything. What I did was I took the absolute values of their skill level 8 for these UR cards. So pretty much all the standard UR score up cards and then I compared it with the new value, and then we found the ratios for all of them. It's all color-coded as well. Uh, there, I do have a link in the description for this sheet that I will share, if you do want to look at the data at your leisure. I don't really want to go over the, the, the boring numbers too much, just showing it off here. I, I organized it based on notes, combo, and uh, perfect, to see if there was some sort of pattern um, from like all this mumbled up data, I couldn't really find anything, but when we start to organize things, then you do kind of see a pattern in the end. But yeah, uh, let's take a look at the absolute tier list, and you're not going to see this tier list anywhere else. It's mainly for me, mainly for other whales, 
who are interested in like breaking the game. Absolute tier is pretty much if you didn't take the percent activation for the skill into account, how powerful would these cards be? And sure, it's an unrealistic metric, but it's still interesting to see like the theoretical maximum potential of a card. And that's what I think a tier list should be. It should be like theoretical best rather than kind of like the being average best. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. So in terms of absolute, like most of these sh like placements don't actually uh, shift. Like if a card was top tier initially, it would have stayed top tier. Since only really the, the range of ratio buffs was from 1.22 to 1.26, so it's not like a, there's going to be a huge deviation from these absolute placements. You can kind of see that uh, Halloween Hanamaru and Halloween Kanon are still kind of the queens of absolute. Uh, SOG Miko for cool as well. And then Circus Umi, Fairy Miko, the Dancer Katori. Uh, I think this is the Water Balloon World Daya, and then uh, Constellation Maki, as well as the Animal Maki. So these would be like the top three absolute for each of these attributes. And I've also kind of taken the liberty to put the type of skill it does have, just to see if I could find any kind of pattern. And N is Note, P is Perfect Base, and then C is Combo Base. Based on Absolute, there isn't really too much of a pattern, but the game isn't really balanced around Absolute. The game is balanced around averages. At least that's what k did in this uh, game balance update. So if we take up the, the average tier list and take a look here, and we just ignore Pool Honoka because she actually doesn't belong here. It's, it's... I swear they just made a mistake. But if you ignore Pool Honoka, you can kind of see that there is a discernible pattern for averages. You can see like here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The top 8 smile cards in terms of averages, if you don't count Pool Honoka, they're all perfect based. And I kind of do like this approach, because Kayla do realize that uh, the order of difficulty in terms of like benefit was Perfect, combo, and then note, because perfect base cards were the hardest to activate since you had to get perfects. Combo base ones are easier to activate as long as you get a full combo, you'll get the best results every time. And then note based are like the easiest to activate because all it requires is for the note to appear on the screen. So, like, you could not tap anything, and after it's like 17 notes, uh, a particular skill that had like a every 17 notes requirement, it would have a chance of activating. So it makes sense that you should reward perfect based cards the most, since they're the hardest to activate, and then combo based, and then note based. So then this is the pattern we more or less see if we kind of examine like these groups. So here's all the perfects, except for, except for this Nico. Unfortunately for this Nico, I swear, they probably mistook Pool Honoka for the initial Nico, and they should have given the 1.26 ratio buff to this card instead of Pool Honoka, because this card got, if I recall correctly, a ridiculously low ratio buff, despite it being a perfect based card. Like, all these other perfect based cards got very high buffs. Well, most of them at least. They just kind of like, to, in order to make the averages stand out more, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, like, all these perfect luck, or not perfect luck, like these perfect based scorecards are here, and then all the combo based ones are here, and then all the note based ones are at the end. And granted, it's, like, you can see a lot of note based ones kind of scattered across uh, the, the line here, but they're just kind of like the limited cards. So the limited cards, like the birthday ones, or like the other limited box examples, uh, they're kind of like the outliers, just like Pool Honoka is. I think they wanted to make a limited cards uh, slightly more powerful on average, just because they are limited. 
which is fair. Um, but really, the whole point of this update was just to combat the AC Umi, which was dominating uh, the leaderboards. It was kind of like stupid that um, one card did significantly better on average than um, the in all, like all the other cards in the game. So they pretty much made it so all these cards are very comparable to the uh, AC Umi. Um, the AC Umi was a very powerful card on average, but in the absolute sense, it wasn't too good. Um, but again, since the game is balanced around average and not absolute, I'm making all the cards, like all the UR scorecards, um, being on average close to AC Umi just makes it so AC Umi isn't too viable anymore. So you would much rather run any of these scorecards because they offer like a higher potential, a higher absolute chance to get a high score, pretty much. So, that's pretty much it. If you want to study these numbers yourself, uh, the spreadsheet's in the description. Uh, you can also visit my Discord channel. Uh, there's a team building um, text channel where you can use Gumbar Robot, which is the thing I use. I code it myself to extract data and then, you know, do a whole bunch of like math stuff for you. Calculates the uh, standard deviations as well if you want to get really technical into it. But yeah, uh, all I really have to say is uh, Pool Hanukkah doesn't belong here. Kilab either thought um, she was initial Nico, or they think Pool Hanukkah is a limited card, or they think Pool Hanukkah is perfect based. And all three of those are incorrect, so it's unfortunate, but the best, most consistent card in the game prior to this update thus becomes even more powerful after this update. So, if you're building like second year smile, there is Pool Hanukkah in the sticker shop in the worldwide version right now. You might want to buy a few if you can. Or just, just make a team of nine of them. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, in terms of um, pure and cool though, things are a bit more interesting. So, since you don't have Pool Hanukkah, the be most like, viable thing is a first year pure team since all three of these cards, that's a Rin, Constellation Maki, and the Kunoichi Haneo, they're all accessible in the sticker shop, so you can just buy them. But again, they are perfect based, so you'll be punished very severely if you're not good at the game. So if you're not good at the game, then the next most viable option is Haisho Honoka for the Winter Hanamaru. But you can buy Taisho Honoka from the sticker shop, so that's probably the thing you want to aim for. And then for cool, um, same thing really. Uh, this animal... Uh, what is this? Pajama Maki? And this um, Teacher Hanamaru. And this uh, Orchestra Hanayo. They're all perfect based, so if you're not too good at the game, uh, you would much rather get something like uh, this Angel Mari dog Kanon or uh, Animal 2 Maki because uh, you can buy her from the sticker shop. And of course if you're a whale, absolute meta like I am, nothing really changes. Uh, it just makes it so um, the cards that you know and love do more better on average. However, like a lot of the time you'll probably lose to a whole bunch of other cards because it's kind of like the best example I can give you is uh, this Nico here has an average of 235.2 per note, um, but in the absolute sense, he has 470.4, which, which makes him the second strongest in absolute for pure cards, but the absolute worst, <laughs> ironically, in terms of average. But that doesn't mean that it's a bad card at all. It, it's a very powerful card, it's just that probably like 99 times out of 100, I I'm gonna lose to everything else here, but that one time, but that one time, it'll beat, beat the ever-living shit out of all of these, and it'll, like, all of them will not be able to beat me back. Except for Halloween Kana. He's the queen of absolute. But yeah, um, normally you enjoy all this rambling. Like, I always find this, some um, math interesting. If not just because I'm, like, one of the few people who actually study it. Just because most people play School Idol Festival for, for their waifus. But for me, it's just about the numbers at this point. But yeah, hopefully uh, you found this useful. Share it with some people if you want to educate them about the new balance changes. I don't know when it's coming out to Worldwide. We'll just have to wait and see what K-Lab has in store. 
moral of the story, I'll go buy Pool Hanukkah because everyone else, like K-Lab said, go fuck yourself.